Are you ready to incorporate Bitmojis into your classroom? Let's dive in. Hey guys, it's Cassie from Creatabilities, and today we are going to be talking about all things Bitmoji classrooms. Now, before we get into the nitty gritty, I just wanna say, this is not something that you need to incorporate if it's going to stress you out, if it's going to overwhelm you. You do not need to have a Bitmoji classroom to be a good teacher. However, they are fun, they're fun to customize, and the kids seem to like them, so if you wanna try it, let's go. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is download the Bitmoji app on your phone. You cannot create a Bitmoji from the web. You have to download the free app and spend time and create your own Bitmoji so that you can really customize it and tailor it to whatever you want it to look like. Okay, so after you have downloaded the app on your phone, you are going to go to the Chrome Web Store. Now, I really recommend using Chrome because it just tends to work with Google and digital things a lot better. So go to the Chrome Web Store and you're gonna type in the search bar, Bitmoji. Then right here, this is the extension that you wanna add so that you can insert your Bitmoji into whatever your digital classroom will look like. So on mine, it says remove from Chrome. On yours, it's gonna say install to Chrome. And then right up here in the corner, it gives you this little rectangle with a smiley face. That is the extension. So you, after you install it, you click on it and it'll just pull up all of your Bitmoji options. It'll take your Bitmoji and put it into a whole bunch of different stickers that you can use. So after you have created your Bitmoji and downloaded your extension, you're going to want to create a new slide presentation. You can do that directly from your Google Drive or you can go to Google and I'll show you how to go through that. So you can just go to google.com and there's this grid of nine buttons up here at the top. Click on that, scroll down a little bit and it says slides. Click on slides click on blank and it's gonna pull up a brand new blank template for you to use. Now you don't need those text boxes so we're gonna select those and just delete. The next thing we want to do is insert the background image. Now you can go to insert picture and add a picture that way but that's gonna make it so your kids can move it and click it and drag it and it's just gonna be a huge mess and you don't wanna deal with it. So what I recommend doing is click on this background button right here, click on choose image. Now, if you have some on your computer that you wanna use, great, but the easiest way is to go to Google image search. Then you can search for whatever you want. I like to do floor and wall background because that gives kind of the depth and the perception of it being a real classroom. And there's just a ton of different options. It really doesn't matter which one you pick. I'm gonna click this one and then click done. And that way I can't click it, I can't drag it, I can't delete it, I can't resize it. So that's one less thing for your kids to have to worry about or for you to have to worry about that your kids are gonna play and manipulate and mess up. So go ahead and insert that as your background image. Now you can leave it like this or you can insert different pictures or different furniture or things like that just to kind of make it feel more homey, make it feel more real life. So this time we're gonna to go to insert image. And if you have some again on your computer, or if you have clip art saved on your computer, you can do it that way or you can search the web. Now the key here that you really, really, really want to remember is to include the word transparent into your search. Otherwise, you're gonna have a background and you're gonna have to do an extra step to remove that background. So for example, if I want a chair, I can, I'm gonna do transparent chair. And it'll pull up a ton of different options here. There are some that are real life, that are some that are clip art, some that are drawings. And you can go through and just scroll and click on the, the one you want and click insert. Now you can see here how it has a white background and I'm gonna show you in just a second what you can do to remove that. But for now, I'm going to just pick a different chair image to get one that's gonna be more transparent. See, and so now you can tell 
It's just a chair. I can click it and drag it. I can move it. I can resize it to whatever would make sense for what I want. If you don't like the placement, you can right click and go down to where it says rotate and then flip it. You can flip it horizontally, you can flip it vertically, and that way it just kind of makes more sense and fits the space in your digital classroom. So then I could do the same thing. Insert image, search from web. I might do a transparent desk. And it'll give me all of these different images. Again, some that are clip art, some that are real life. You can just pick what is fitting the style of your room. So then I can click and drag and kind of resize that so that it looks like we are really starting to create our digital classroom. If you want to insert a whiteboard or a smart board, a really, really easy way to do that if you can't find an image that you like, just go to insert, then down to shape, and insert a rectangle. That way you can make it a frame, you can put a quote in there, you can type morning announcements in there, you can put your objectives in there for the day. So I'm gonna insert my image, and the, over here is where you can change the fill. I like to leave it white just so it kind of looks and feels like a whiteboard or a smart board. And then the outline here, I like to make black. Now, if you get a picture that you really, really love, and you think, oh man, I really wanna use this, but it has a big white box around it. Let me show you a quick tip to remove that white box. All right, so say you wanted to use this chair image in your classroom. I'm gonna right click and I'm going to save image as. I'm just gonna put white chair. Then I'm gonna to go to this website. It's remove.bg. This is gonna remove your background image. All you have to do is upload your image and it removes the background for you. It's really that simple. You download it, it downloads for you. You can go back to your classroom and insert it and you have whatever image you want without the background. So let's go ahead and upload this one from the computer because I downloaded it. And now I have this nice looking chair that has the background image removed. Okay, so now that you've got all of your furniture in place, now is the time to use that web extension and insert your Bitmoji. So I'm gonna go up here to that little square that we already installed, and it's gonna pull up all of these different options. Now I'm gonna use the one that has me sitting down just because I'm gonna place it in the chair so it looks a little bit more realistic. So you just right click, copy the image, and go and paste it into your classroom and then you can resize it and kind of move it around until it makes sense. There we go, looking pretty good. Okay, the next step after you have inserted everything, you're happy with how it looks, you want to secure it down. If you don't do that, your kids are gonna be able to click and drag all your furniture and your Bitmoji. So there are a couple ways to do that and let me show you some of the easiest ways. There's something that you can do where you just set the permissions where your students can view it. So it's a view only. That's a really easy way to do it. I still like to secure it as an image. So there's that extra layer of protection around all of my hard work. If I'm going to take the time to build out a digital Bitmoji classroom, I definitely wanna make sure that my kids can't mess it up or that I don't have to go back in and redo it. So again, once you have your classroom ready to go, you can just go to File, Download, and then you're gonna select JPEG. That will download it for you as your JPEG, and then you can re-upload it so it's secure. I've seen other teachers where they will take screenshots of it, and that works too. Just know that if you're taking a screenshot, if you tend to make multiple copies of that, it gets blurrier and blurrier as you go. So I like to save it as a JPEG so that I can go and upload it again. So then you could get a new slide, delete those text boxes, we don't need them. So you've deleted the text boxes, you're gonna insert, only you're gonna do it as a background, don't insert as an image because then your kids can drag it. So background, choose image, this time we're gonna upload from the computer. 
and we're gonna upload this as a background. Now, you can't click and drag it and move it. Now this one is driving me a little crazy because it's kind of boring. So I am going to upload a classroom that I have created before this to show you how you can hyperlink it to really make it functional. Because yes, this looks cute and it's fun and it's, you can kind of customize it, but you really want it to have a purpose and a function as well, especially with all the time that you're spending on it. Okay, so this is a background that I created beforehand. It's using clip art and I just like the look and the feel of it. It seems a little bit cleaner. I've already secured everything and I've inserted it as a background image. That way it can't be moved around. So how do you make this functional? Well, a really fun way is to insert a screenshot of a video that you want your kids to watch. So I have this little smart board here in the middle of this classroom. I'm just going to insert the image I'm gonna upload it from my computer. And this could just be me explaining a lesson. It could be a screenshot of a YouTube video. It could be anything, a picture that you've just downloaded, anything you want it to be. And I'm going to move it over to where the whiteboard is. I'm gonna resize it so it fits in there. And then my kids will start to know, okay, there's a picture of my teacher. I know that it's hyperlinked. I know that's where my video is. So I'm gonna insert that screenshot and then let me show you how to hyperlink it. You can insert words and hyperlink those, but I actually like the whole thing to be hyperlinked. So I go to insert shape and I'll just do a rectangle because that fits my shape and I'm gonna highlight the whole thing. Now, I need to set the color and the border to transparent so it doesn't show up. So I'm gonna go over here, I'm gonna click on the fill and make that transparent. I'm gonna click on the outline, I'm gonna make that transparent. That way the shape is still there and the kids can still click on the link, but it doesn't block out whatever you're doing. You can either right click and hit link, or you can hit this little link icon up here at the top. You'll type in whatever the website is that you want it to link to, hit apply, and you are good to go. And again, you can do that over and over and over again. If you want to insert a link over these books that will take them to Epic or to uh, Raz Kids or something like that, you'll insert the shape, you'll go to the fill, set it to transparent, set the outline to transparent, and then hyperlink it to wherever you want them to go. And that way it sends the kids to their lessons, they can read their objectives, they get used to seeing it every day and they know exactly what to do and it works out great. Okay, now if this stresses you out, if trying to add in the images and remove the backgrounds and all that jazz is just one more thing that you don't think you can deal with right now, I have these pre-made backgrounds that I'm showing you on the screen right here. They're done for you, everything is secured. All you need to do is go through, insert any images or text you want, hyperlink it how you want it, and you are good to go. I'm gonna drop that link in the description of this video if you wanna check those out. All right guys, so hopefully that helped walk you through what you need to do to set up your own Bitmoji digital classroom. If you like what you saw, go ahead and hit that like button and follow for more. I'll see you guys next time. Hey guys, it's Cassie here. I hope you enjoyed that video. I have a bunch more videos on the channel that you can check out. Don't forget to like and subscribe, share with your teacher buddies, make sure you're spreading the love so that all your teacher friends can be as awesome as you are. If you're looking for ways to support the channel, you can head over to Patreon. I'm always looking for ways to thank my patrons with freebies and resources. Bye for now.